hands, everybody. Keep it going for Ben Pierce. And oh my goodness, keep those hands a clapping for your next performer, all the way from Charlottesville. Clap your hands for Randolph Washington Jr. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Okay, um, so a few months back, I was in the grocery store, and uh, this kid was saying hi to everybody. Um, and he came up to me and said hi, and I said hi back. And then he got really excited. So then he ran to his mom and said, Mom, did you hear that? He said hi. I told Grandpa that black people weren't nice. Uh, sorry, mean, that's what the, that's my own line. But, uh, I really got excited about that because it was cool because like this kid heard his grandfather uh, say something racist, right? And instead of believing it or ignoring it, he said no. I'm going to do evidence-based research. Uh, I like that. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift's work. Anyone else? Taylor Swift? No? Okay. No Swifties in the room. Um, and when I say her work, I'm not talking about like her music or her acting. Um, I'm a fan of her uh, charity work, particularly her charity work of uh, keeping uh, white women docile. Uh, she kind of she keeps their rage focused on like Jake Gyllenhaal and, and Loki, because um, like they're a very powerful group, you know. And like if it wasn't for Taylor Swift, there would have been like three times as many people at January sixth, and I do believe our country would have fallen. Uh, so I don't think of her as a pop star. I really think of her as a patriot. And I think if you ever see Taylor Swift, don't ask for an autograph or a photo. Just Salute. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been checking out my algorithms recently, and they're kind of weird. Like they're different on different uh, platforms. Like my Facebook algorithm algorithm is just like dogs learning tricks and doing cute stuff, and then my uh, TikTok algorithm is like discussions on like uh, capitalism and socialism and all this intellectual stuff, and then my Instagram algorithm is just. Korean men working out. <laughs> and I don't know what Instagram knows about me, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Uh, uh, I recently read that like uh, interracial relationships, uh, in America at least, uh, while they are like very intense at the beginning, they tend to be less toxic over time. And I feel like that's like a strong uh, like reason why a lot of us should just start dating interracially, you know? Will's already ahead of me on that one. Um, but uh, and some of you might be thinking, Randolph, this is just you trying to make an excuse to sleep with white women. It's like, no, this is an excuse for me to sleep with Korean men. Pay attention. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so you, know, you guys have probably heard about this in the past few years. There's been all this hubbub about critical race theory. And my favorite conspiracy theory about it is that like uh, far white people think that liberals are pushing critical race theory in schools to make white kids hate themselves so much that they turn gay out of spite. And I gotta say, the logic is sound. Because see, I was raised to be a feminist and I learned to hate men so much that I started sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> But of course, you can't make someone gay because um, being gay is a choice, and I chose financial freedom. Uh, children are very expensive. Don't have them, okay? It's a mistake. It's almost, it's almost a bigger mistake than going to college. Uh, but uh, no, I didn't choose to be gay. And like, I feel like uh, you know, far right, they get upset about every little thing. Like, they were upset that like, the new Superman was bisexual, and they were all mad about it. Uh, Batwoman came out as a lesbian, they were mad about that. One of the Power Rangers is a lesbian now, and they were like, well, actually, okay. Y'all can have the Rainbow Warriors. Um, but uh, yeah, none of those, oh, uh, none of those things that made me uh, gay, uh, well, except for Power Rangers. I actually have a theory that Power Rangers may have actually been, in fact, what uh, made me a homosexual man. Specifically the Red Power Ranger, and specifically when he would wear a tank top and I could see like this muscle, whatever this muscle is, I just want you to know if you're a built man, if you've ever walked around with this out, you turn somebody gay. Um, I don't know what this muscle is called, I assume it's like the phagazoid or something, but uh, I'm pretty sure tank tops are the reason why uh, there was a, like a large leap in uh, gay men in America. I'm not sure exactly what causes like lesbians uh, or women to turn gay, 
But I suspect rompers are involved. Um. All right, guys, you've been great. Keep it going for your host. number one Power Rangers fan, and he has the power himself. Oh my goodness. I hope you all are ready for your next performer. Bit of a newcomer to the scene, but we're so happy to have her. Please clap your hands for Holly Bomba. What's up, everyone? How we doing? Good. Woo! I'm doing great because I almost ran over someone on the way here, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, I quit my job a while ago. Um, it sucked. Um, we were all falling apart over there, but our manager would always tell us, guys, we're such a great team, which is true, we did work well together. That's why five of us quit at the same time. <laughs> it was a team effort. <laughs> um, but yeah, then at one point he started talking bad about me behind my back. And you know, I thought he was my friend, so it really hurt me. So I said, I'm gonna hurt him like he hurt me. I'm gonna unfriend him on Facebook. <laughs> Only to find out that he had already blocked me. <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> uh, but you know, some good things happened at that job. Um, I got a raise earlier in the year. That's because minimum wage went up. <laughs> Uh, but since then, I've been at a new job, um, and it's pretty good. But I had to make a couple of lifestyle changes. I had to give up something I love that I do every day. Sleep. And uh, it's a different work environment. Um, I can't really be my true self because I'm a walking HR violation. <laughs> Thanks, I got one laugh. <laughs> um, the, the place I work at is actually an auto repair shop. <clears throat> where you take your jacked up car after you wreck it. And I know we'll never go out of business because people in Virginia can't drive. I know, because I'm one of them, clearly. <laughs> uh, but it also means I deal with difficult people. Like, if you work for an insurance company, I hate you. That's all I have to say about that. But then there's always that one specific customer where every time you see them, every time you hear their name, you just want to die. Ours was this crazy old dude who decided to pick up his car before it was done being fixed. And he tried to tell us we were doing something illegal. He was all, oh, I studied law for many years, I know how it works. I said, buddy, I'm pretty sure the laws have changed since the 1800s. <laughs> but uh, there are some customers that say nice things. Like, there was a lady that said, tell your parents they raised a lovely daughter. I was like, huh, good one. Oh. And then there was another guy that said, you were the nicest person I talked to today. I hope you have a nice weekend with your family. First of all, I hate my family. <laughs> and second, both of those people made me realize how good I am at being fake. But uh, back to driving, I find it really funny when squirrels get run over. Because <laughs> they're so stupid, they always die. I feel like at this point they want to die. <laughs> and uh, I live out in the country, which is all back roads, which means you can't go out without seeing a squirrel squished on the road. And it brings me joy. Uh, one time I was riding with my mother, and a squirrel ran out in front of her. I got excited, I got excited, I was like, yeah, run it over! And then we felt a bump. <laughs> that means she ran it over. <laughs> but the thing is, she ran it over without even trying. I aim for them suckers, and I can never get one. <laughs> uh, then there was this other time, um, I was riding with my mother again, and a bunch of raccoons ran out in front of her. And this time, she went straight for them. And we felt multiple bumps. <laughs> yeah, she literally obliterated a whole family of raccoons on Christmas Eve when we were coming home from church. Uh, <laughs> You know, I think, I think we should invent new holidays because they're kind of the same old thing, you know? We should have days like, commit your favorite crime day. My intrusive thoughts finally win. Uh, we should have naked day, a day where you hope you don't see grandma. And we should have sleep with whoever you want day. Well, to me that's just a Friday night, but in my head. <laughs> 
Guys, that has been my time. Thank you so much. Keep it over, Holly, everybody. Come on, she just got a new job and she loves to kill small animals. That takes Moxie. And you know who has plenty of Moxie? Your next performer coming up. You know her, you love her. Please clap your hands for Nadine Donaghy. with this mic standing cord. Uh, how's everyone's day going? Good. Good. Word that's figured out. Uh, I, um, I lost a cat today. Not even my cat. <laughs> a cat that has been entrusted to my care clearly by a fool. <laughs> no, I did find the cat. I would not have just left and come to an open mic if the cat were still missing. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, the cat was lost, uh, I, by the point that I was in tears, I knelt down to like say a prayer, to be like, Heavenly Father, please help me find this cat, uh, and within like 15 minutes of that prayer, I did find the cat, and like, you know how sometimes, uh, I feel like a lot of times when people are like, oh, I'm so blessed, other people take it where they're like, it's like as if you're saying that God loves you more, and I'm like, I mean a little. Like, <laughs> not really, but it's it's like when one of your siblings is like, Mom likes you more than me, and it's like, yeah, but do you ever call her? Like, I don't know what relationship you think you have going here. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, have you guys ever heard this pickup line that people use sometimes where they say, do you come here often? It's like an old-timey pickup line. It's fun. What you're pretty much saying is, may I stalk you here later? <laughs> Uh, speaking of stalking, my ex came to one of my comedy shows the other day. Uh, yep. He, uh, it wasn't like an accident either. It's not like he walked in and he was like, oh, you're on this show? Awkward. No, this was like his big play to be like, you and I should be together. So I know what you guys are thinking, like, oh, Nadine, that sounds terrible. What could be worse? Like, what could blow your confidence and ruin your zen more before you go on stage than that? Uh, well, minutes before my set, I broke the venue's toilet. <laughs> I had to go find the nearest person who worked there and, like, bear my shame to her. Uh, I looked so pitiful that she gave me a hug. <laughs> Has your life ever been going so badly that the person whose job it now is to clean up your bathroom disaster feels sorry for you? <laughs> Uh, I felt so terrible, you guys. I was like, I gotta get this woman a present to like apologize for this terrible thing that I've done. I was like, what should I get her? Probably not chocolate. <laughs> I ended up going with a candle because I would love for her to associate a different smell with me. <laughs> I, I bring it, I write a little note that's like, sorry, I made your day crappy. Uh, and I walk into the venue and I don't see her and I look for my friend Mike, who's like the showrunner, and I was like, Mike, I'm looking for Jesse. I have this little present for her. And he's like, oh, Nadine, that night after you left, she like decided to take a step back from working here. <laughs> uh, he said it didn't have to do with me, but I think we can all agree the timing is pretty damning. <laughs> you guys are probably like, what did you do in this bathroom? Um, the most ladylike way I can put it is that I had an upset stomach. <laughs> you don't plan these things, they just happen. <laughs> it was not upset because I had seen my ex. My stomach was upset because I eat like a death row inmate hours before execution. <laughs> Someone asked me what that meant yesterday and I was like, it means that I'm eating like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> like there's just nothing to live for. <laughs> Do what you want. <sighs> no, it was, it was weird. It was weird seeing my ex. Uh, he, he kept like, he wanted to go out with me after he wanted to take me somewhere and uh, I, I overplan myself to the point where I often like have zero free time whatsoever. So I'll just be like pretty much in tears from how overwhelmed I am. Uh, but it really worked out this time. Like sometimes my stupidity pays off guys. Cause I think of that phrase like idle hands are the devil's play things. And I'm like, man, if I had had even an hour to spare, I definitely would have let this devil play with me. <laughs> All right, thanks you guys have been great. 
for Nadine, everybody. She killed it here like she killed that toilet. Keep it clapping for her. My goodness, we know her. We love her. Just like you're going to love your next performer. You're going to want to stick around for this one, short, short friend. He is Richmond's, one of Richmond's greatest comedic minds. Please put your hands together for Charlie Waring. Woo! 